love. We all like our relationships. We all want to always be in it. We all, all those who have it, have it, want to keep it. So, I want to go ahead and give you the brutally honesty how to keep those one, those relationships. Um, I was just talking to a friend of mine and it just got me thinking and I was just like, oh yeah, I, there's some things I think people have forgotten. So here are the common sense about keeping your relationship if you truly, truly do want to keep one. Um, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. It morally matters if you're in a relationship, if you are the masculine one or the feminine one. These are the general characteristics for the masculine one. The masculine one is usually the bread maker, the one who brings home the bacon, um, is usually doing the work in the field and stuff like that. It doesn't matter if male or female. The feminine one is usually the one that stays home, taking care of errands and running things like that. That's the homemaker. That's usually the feminine one. Okay. Now, some people have jobs where they're not home every night, or like in trucking, for instance. They, they've always gone for a while. They come back. Or some have those careers that keep them in late nights in the office. And I completely understand that one does on the other side, both sides of the coin here. Now, if you're the one waiting at home for your mate to come home, and sometimes it never seems that they're ever around, well, don't always assume and jump to the conclusion that they're cheating, because, you know, that's the quickest way of getting yourself booted out of a relationship. Okay, but you can be brutally honest. Okay, if, let's talk about the side. Okay. Now, you have to understand that the one who's working, okay, is working. It does not give them an excuse to ignore you or answer your phone calls or give you the time of day. No, you just have to do things in a monitored way. Failure to do so, if you're doing two things too excessive, you do mean will only stress the guy out or the gal out. And when you stress the one who's masculine out, they tend to have the care existence of just saying fuck it and bouncing out. The reason is they have the care of saying fuck it, it's not because they don't care. It's totally quite the opposite. Those are the masculinity types, or the ones that know exactly what they want. They are usually brutally honest in what they end. They come and direct you in the same direction, and they, and they have no problem saying it. If you ask them something, they will generally tell you the honest truth. You know what I mean? Sometimes they won't answer you simply because they know you can't handle it. But those who really do care, will answer you even if you get pissed off, okay, because you ask the question and in their mind they answer the truth, all right? Those types, all right, are the types also too to hold it in for a long period of time, the things that just nitpick at them, that bug living crap at them, that they just tend to hold things up like a, like a bottle and then just explode a little bit later, all right? And masculine types are always headstrong, leader types, I said they get shit done, alright? So when they go ahead and find their mate, they look for certain characteristics that would suit them and help them, alright? When they think they found that one, they usually get in a relationship with them, alright? Those are masculine types, I will tell you this now, do not like their mate to change on them. If they were cool with them having friends before, they expect them to be cool with having friends later. Just because you became like the one that they're with doesn't mean you can go off and change their whole life. When you start doing that and they start feeling like they're being controlled, masculine types do not like to be controlled. And so when they feel like they're being controlled, they will bounce. They'll be like, I don't care, I don't have the personality, I don't care how fine this person looks, they're out. You know what I mean? They don't want to deal with their crap. So you have to understand this. It's not saying that you can't be forefront with it. No. See, if they can go ahead and dish things out, they should also be able to, like, handling the dish to serve too. So, but you always have to be straight up about them in the beginning. You 
can't hide who you are and then later on flip the script on them. They don't like things like that because they were looking for certain qualities before that they liked, you know what I mean? And then when you try to switch it up on them, they'll just be like, fuck this shit. Alright, they don't like to hear anyone that's going to bitch at them, which they say usually when a girl tries or a guy to help the cop from here to see it's bitching. No, it's just because the way the person goes and puts like the direction hitting towards them, they feel like it's bitching. Alright, there's always a nice, respectful way of going around doing it instead of just going and nag, 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 bitch, 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 bitch. Like, the worst thing you can do when a guy, like, a guy or gal just gets home from work, okay, is to start nagging, 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 bitch, 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 bitch. This is all they hear it as, nagging, bitch, 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 okay, this is the reason why. Like, they hear it, just like, they just got a long day from work. They're stressed in from whatever the hell they have to go on, and if the home is not the way that they like it, they are most likely holding it in and not trying to tell you shit. Alright, if they're a the type of person that's usually a clean freak, trust me, they expect come home to something clean free. They do not want to go ahead and do work, career work, and then come home and do housework. You were, if you were the person that lives with them and you're there at the house all the day, trust me, that's they're kind of expecting you to help out pick up the load right there. Now, to go ahead and confront your issues with the person, you know, one, don't start a fight about other things because you're mad about something else and you want them to play a detective. They are already stressed out enough. Right, so they're not gonna play detective with you. All right, they're just gonna be like, "What the fuck is this person tripping on?" All right, it's called human decency, common sense. All right, be flat out about what the hell you want to go ahead and confront them about. Don't like expect them to play detective because they're not gonna do it. And don't ex yell at them and bitch it out something that they dropped on the floor, or they or making it sweet out because you're mad about something else. No, the best way to do is just be honest with your feelings. Tell exactly how you feel. And just not yelling at them, not being just in a nice way. Like, ask them how their day was first, so that way you know how to approach them. Ask them, or ask her, you know what I mean? Ask him, or like, how was your work today? You know, any problems with me? Try to talk to them in a way. And, they, and then they ask, probably get to start a conversation how your day was. And then you could start playing with things that are just kind of bothering you and bothering them. And go, little things like that can start being. Alright, or give them something to eat, ask them if they're hungry, if they have eight, or stuff like that just to show that they care. The little things like that can go a long way. And you can actually be direct and brutally honest and still keep your relationship. Now, now if you're sometimes the other role, like I said, the feminine type. Usually the masculine types don't usually are always self-centered and tend to not notice when the feminine has any issues. For that, I bet they're really sorry. But here's the same sense signs to know that something might be wrong. Okay. Um, if you notice the gals starting to not want to pick up on things, if you notice that they're not helping out with the, like trying to do their end of the work, if you notice that they're just always seem stressing, it might lead to the thing that you're not giving them enough attention. So if they're not feeling appreciated, they don't really feel like they want to do anything. And so you might just want to go ahead and just be the one direct and talk it out because, you know, one of you guys have to be the mature one. Because if either your side is going to be the mature one, it's just going to get worse. And the ball's going to keep on going and going and going and going until you're no longer in a relationship. It just like sucks. Any guy will tell you that they, you have to remember that those who are masculine types, like I said, are simple. Very, very simple. Those who are usually the feminine type are very complicated. And they are always thinking and have a lot of things in their mind. And they're always multi handy And sometimes they have too much time on their hands. And when they have too much time on their hands, they tend to be plotting and scheming and thinking these way out notions that you're just like, what the fuck, where did I come from? Okay. When you see them in that, don't slow the rule, talk it out, alright? One of you guys have to be drunk, because if both of your sides are going to be immature, it's not going to go anywhere, it's just going to go to a breakup. With that said, love takes easy communication and compromise. 
It's not always about keeping the score. It's more or less about doing, listening to one another and being able to talk on our name. And you shouldn't have to curse each other. You shouldn't have to talk to each other badly. You should never have to be right. If you find yourself ever freaking cursing, yelling, or screaming at your mate, you should already be bouncing because that's not how you need. You should be able to talk together one on one and respect level. Always have respect for one another. With that said, you get me? Like I said, those in masculine time tend to, it don't mean not to live like it is a feminine, they just usually you're stressed out. And so that doesn't give an excuse to do anything, but you know what I mean? Both sides have to set, like, this boundary. Like, a boundary where this is where my walls are, this is how it is, and he doesn't give this, like, that will tell me this is my walls and thing. You have to come to those boundaries and come to compromise, you know, so just mesh as well, you know what I mean? And then those compromises, you know what I mean? Things can flow easily. You can either have time to talk, sometimes you have different things to do, you know what I mean? Different type of things. Like, example for myself. Like, if I'm in a relationship with someone, and I want to talk to them, like, the worst thing my relationship can ever do is, like, um, tell me if I'm calling them busy, but that, that shit pisses me off. See, but I tell them that in the beginning. You see, by being honest about what things that just set you off, it can save you in the long run, you know what I mean? I prefer, like, if you be politely enough to tell me, you know what I mean, that, hey, um, I can't really talk right now, uh, but I'll call you a little bit later, you know what I mean? Bye. Or, simply, you know what I mean, like, they can even have the phone, set it on their desk or whatever, do what they're doing and talking about, you know what I mean, and I can wait patiently until they're done. You know what I mean, that lets me know that they're busy, and if they're too busy, I can, I can just hang up. That will stop anyone who, like, thinks a lot, you know, to stop thinking bad things so you know they're really busy. You know what I mean? Little things like that can go a long way. Or another trick would probably be, um, well, not tricks, but they're just ways to let people know. Um, is texting them, letting them know they're okay, you know what I mean? Or just letting you know when you leave somewhere. I mean, those little things can actually make a big difference in a relationship. And if they're so simple, and it's really sad that people tend to not do this all the time. It doesn't matter if you're masculine or feminine. Another part of a relationship is you should always be consistent in what you're doing. Remember, the person picked you up for a reason for the certain qualities that you have. So, because of those qualities, they decide to make you your mate. Now, when you become inconsistent and stop doing the things that they actually enjoyed and liked about you, you know what I mean? That could also fall the relationship. And never take someone's kindness in the other relationship for weakness or blow up on your mate just because you're the closest to them. That's not cool at all. You should be able to come to the able to feel you can find them and then not yell at them or take things out on them. Alright? And if your mate lets you use their vehicles, cars, things, or stuff like that, you know what I mean? Um, you mean probably try to help out. Do you know what I mean? Keep the car the car clean. Leave don't leave things worse than that was given to you. Okay, the other mate won't say nothing to me because they're anything, but trust me, they're holding it in and it pisses them off where they get so mad eventually they just start showing you this is how they want it done and they don't really mean to say it that way. But that's just the, like there's certain little standards how they like me, sorry. And in any common respect when you're respecting your member, you always have to respect your mate and they have to respect you. Don't leave worse things worse than the way that you had got them. You, think you want to leave things better than the way that you got them. These little key things, trying to understand, like, the other side's point of view, do you know what I mean? It's always, sometimes we get caught up in our own selves that we don't pay attention to the other person's point of view. That's another thing you want to do. You want to try to put yourself in the other person's shoe, do you know what I mean? So you can try to understand. If, that's why by asking them how their day was or everything, really, can kind of help you out what's going on with them, do you know what I mean? And three. Make sure that you're not the freaking, make sure, no one's a freaking minor reader. So, the worst thing you can ever do is have someone try to play detective. Especially when they're already stressed out. You don't want to do no detective things. Just by being straight out with how you feel in a nice, respectful way, both parties can actually be happy. Both sides. See, I mean, no one wants to play detective and no one's a freaking minor reader. Alright? 
and then four. There's always a lot of haters out there in the world, so no one wants to come home to a hater. Remember that. Alright, I hope these three tips are helpful and help you out. If you have any more comments, just press the bottom. Alright, later. Bye.